After the round of Wisconsin, Cats of Engineering driver Yevgeny Kuznetsov was handed a 25-point penalty for avoidable contact with Peter Short during the race. Cats of Engineering has appealed the penalty, but, uh, well, good luck, boys. As far as the round of Indianapolis is concerned, this could be the last time we see the current qualifying format in use, because there's a lot of talk that the qualifying races will be removed from the round of Decatur, and that there will instead just be three rounds of qualifying. Uh, there's been several complaints from some teams about the costs of running the cars uh, for multiple races, which was the, uh, the actually the driving force behind uh, qualifying races being removed from all non-special event races in the first place. So, with that being said, uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see if um, the teams are all united for this, for the round of Decatur, and uh, how that's going to turn out. As is the norm for this race, 42 cars will start, and I'll hand it off to Dan to run through the starting grid. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. The field of 42 qualified over two grueling qualifying sessions and three grueling qualifying races. Winning the Delano Pole Award in Carnival 88 is Scott Bates for Team EFR. On his outside is the Swede, Matthias Taub, who leads the championship. On the second row of the grid, we have Palmer Stiles making his return to the series in Carnival 34, and Dale Roswell's last win came here in 07. Row number three, David Krikorian of California and Zelda Ashby of Japan in Car 55. Neither has won here at Indy. Row number four, Morgan Le Fay making her second career start in the TM Master Cup Series. Luciano Savaral has two career wins. In row number five, Yulia Nasova of Russia has run at the front here before several times, and Ian Cooper has won this race multiple times, the second Team EFR car. Row six, Michael Sykes, his last run here at Indy in the red five, and Alexis Rainsford is a former winner of the race. Leonard Roderick heads up row seven in the number four Volpe, and his teammate Rachel Rainsford on the outside on row seven. Han Yong Sung makes his second start here in car 425 in the Bernstrom. Mike Whitmore on the outside in car 38. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. is the first Sealander to start here at Indy. Akari Ishikawa makes his debut in the 64. Brandon LaRoe in car 24 won the pole at Decatur last year. Andreas Laporte is a shot qualifier in the 92 car. Lewis Kingston in car 17 is on the inside of row 11. Matt Taylor won here in 04. Chris Allen in car 426 is on the inside of row 12, and on his outside, the third Volpe, Packer Carroll, car number 2. Adrian Devereaux, the defending winner of the race in car number 1, is on the inside of row 13 with Chris Davenport flanking him. Arto Kakin in car number 9 is the third Gessler in the field. Bob Steffens, a shot qualifier, car 77. Kevin Dwyer made his way into the qualifying races, as did Melanie Klebno on his outside, car number 12. Uh, Yamino Tenchi in the Clockwork Midnight in car 25. Yevgeny Kuznetsov is on the outside in car 8. Daniel Melrose for his own team, car 67. And Marcus Leonard, the second start for the year for Marcus. Gaspar D'Souza came third here a couple years ago in car double zero. Zach Duff is on his outside in car 74. Carla Rosinski makes Quick Fit's first ever start in the series. Davina Henton only barely squeaked into the race. And Tony Durbin, car number 33, makes his return to the series. He's into the race, in this race, because he uh, switched with Garth McAllister Jr. Tom Delgado is taking over Ethan Everett's car for this race. And at the back of the grid, Kurt Pliskin in car number 16 takes over a teammate's car, as does Lev Azarov in the Rus Autosport, car number 82. The field is in the hands of Scott Bates as they take the flying start off turn four down the main straightaway. The custom carts machine leads the way as Bates gets a great start over Matthias Taub and he sweeps into the lead well before they get into the first turn. Everyone at the front playing it very, very sensibly. Palmer Stiles sits in third. Stiles has not run in this series for quite some time as Taub tries to set up Scott Bates in the 88 car to take the lead. Palmer Stiles, his last run in the series came as an Independence Trophy contender. And, of course, he's a former winner of the Independence Trophy. Matthias Taub in that 10 car has been on a hot streak lately. Uh, pretty much ever since Ohio, he has been the man to beat in this series. Carla Rosinski in the 159 Quick Fit car. This is the, uh, the Dash Cup team's first start in the series. And, oh, oh, whoa. They're pulling low very quickly. I was going to say they are having some problems in final practice, and those problems appear to have resurfaced. So, after one lap, Carla Rosinski is the first retirement. Very disappointing for Quick Fit as Scott Bates almost contact with the 34 as Matthias Taub sweeps on the inside to take over the lead. Siles tries to fo uh, follow suit, but Scott Bates in that 88 car has been the man to beat. And uh, he hasn't won here at Indy, although his teammate has. Scott Bates looking to uh, change that very quickly as we look off the back of Matthias Taub in the 10 car. You can see that 88 car just seems to have such, just seems to be able to do pretty much whatever he wants at this point. 
He took the poll by a, a, a much greater margin than I expected. And uh, Bates in that 88 car, uh, I'd say, is easily the favorite to win this race. David Krikorian in the 66 car is uh, on his way forward. The Californian uh, is in his last start with Hodges Walter Racing for the foreseeable future. We're not quite sure what's going to be going on with DK after this race. Here's Morgan Le Fay on the 343 car. Uh, she made her first start in the WYSIWYG World Soft Car in Quebec. And, um, well, ever since then, uh, well, ever since that race, people haven't looked on her very fondly, and she's slowly going backwards. Adrian Devereaux and uh, Quincy winner Chris Davenport are on their way forwards. Adrian Devereaux won a photo finish here last year uh, over his teammate Luciano Savarol. It was one of his six wins that uh, took him to the championship last year. Davina Henton was six inches away from being bumped out of this race uh, by Michael Humphreys. The Cariola winner started way in the back, and she really isn't making a whole lot of progress. There you see Tony Durbin in the 33 car, however, he is apparently making a decent start out of it. But uh, Durbin knows how to how to run well here. But Kurt Pliskin, that 16 car, you saw that purple car up there, that's the 16 of Pliskin, made a rocket start. We're looking at Yamino Tenshi in car 25, the clockwork, the second of the two clockwork midnights in this race, the other being Dale Roswell, as uh, she's trying to set up Andreas Laporta. Tenshi has uh, fallen off just a little bit, but we'll see if she can make her way forwards. Not uh, she hasn't run a race in quite some time with this team, and uh, there are some doubts about what, about which uh, driver will be running for them in Australia uh, later on. Uh, Bob Steffens in this interesting contraption is running in 26th. I say it's an interesting contraption because Tenere apparently pieced together um, kind of a Franken car. It's got parts of a 2012 car, a 2013 car, and some experimental parts for 2014. He made it into the race, much to everyone's surprise, and. Uh, I think they're just going to be patting themselves on the back, and they're just going to have fun today. Alexis Rainsford is a former uh, TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Champion, uh, winner of the round of Indianapolis, and recently this year, winner of the Indianapolis 500. She's trying to do uh, the double here, trying to win the not only win the, the big one here, the Indy 500, but also winning uh, this race again. Uh, Rainsford now makes her home in open wheel racing. Uh, she's currently she's currently sixth in Champ Car points, having won at Indy, but uh, interestingly enough, not having won another race since. Uh, she is, however, one of the more consistent runners on the circuit, which is a bit of a surprise. As Lev Azrov in the 82 uh, thing that uh, Roos Autosport has brought to this race, uh, they got into the race again with this car, but uh, Azrov has quickly fallen off the pace, which isn't really a surprise. Uh, Roos Autosport's last run here uh, seemed to be pretty much the same thing, and doesn't look like a whole lot's changed for them. Rainsford continues to lead in car 27, her usual number 27 that we've begun to know her for in this series. Roderick now sits behind her in second, and looks like Palmer Stiles is being challenged for third. Mike Whitmore, car 38. Um, he's known in the Master Cup Series for his skills in super speedways, yet interestingly enough, both his wins came on road courses. He's been running in the ASCC lately, with, along with Palmer Stiles, and uh, that's pretty much an all-super speedway series. So. Um, be that as it may, Whitmore is trying to make the best of it here in car 38. On the inside, there you see Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., that uh, that white and blue car. And anyways, here's uh, Chris Allen, Daniel Melrose, and Zach Duff. All three of them have fallen off the pace fairly quickly. And uh, to be quite honest, all three of them are a little lucky they made it onto the starting grid because they were long shots to qualify, kind of like Bob Steffens. But unlike Bob Steffens, uh, they appear to have lost the pack quite quickly. It's kind, of, uh, it's kind of surprising to hear the names Melrose and Duff as being long shots to qualify, and even Chris Allen, because 426 Motorsports knows how to make a, knows how to set up a car to get in the race here. Uh, 426 Motorsports, uh, I believe, got points here last year, or uh, may have been the year before. Speaking of which, Ian Cooper in uh, the car 777 won here in 2011 as uh, to mark sort of his return to full-time racing. After he replaced uh, Charlie Waters at Team EFR, after Waters was sitting uh, after Waters was injured, Cooper took over the role, a second driver, won the race, and uh, well, didn't really have another point I think until the rest uh, for the rest of that season. Be that as it may, though, he's running very well here, and right behind him you see the 88 car Scott Bates. The, both the Team EFR cars very, very fast, and that 777 car uh, was faster than the 88 in final practice, but uh, I think the 88. Uh, well, the 88 is just swept around him. As you see, the 88 is going to have a run on Rainsford, who is sitting very comfortably in the lead right now, but I don't think that'll be comfortable for very long, as the 88 of Scott Bates 
Bates, the oldest driver to be running in the series regularly, the oldest of the, of the regulars by a fair margin. Uh, he still knows how to get it done. He's been very quick, very smooth all season long. 27 car slides up just a little bit. Scott Bates makes his way on the inside, and I believe Bates will have her cleared here. Rainsford, Scott Bates, David Gregory, and all three of them know what they're doing here. Uh, DK in the 66 car could be an underdog threat for the win here. Yeah, that 66 car. Rainsford, sweet, uh, Rainsford sweeps up into the high line. Taub could have a run on car 27, but now all three of the Gesslers are running at the front because Arto Kekkonen has made his way through the field. The Finn has run uh, very strong in this series lately. He uh, he won at Darlington, uh, so uh, I wouldn't count out Arto Kekkonen either in car number 9. Taub in that 10 car, though. If Gessler has got a bullet for the championship, one guy they want to focus on, it might be Taub. But I wouldn't discount Arto Kakinen, who, uh, who uh, some people think could be a bit overdue for a championship, even though Taub has had the measure of him all season long as they run on the inside of Scott Bates and are able to get around him. As uh, now, we're looking at David Krikorian in car number one, but look on the inside. There's the two-time and reigning Master Cup champion, Adrian Devereaux, and in that red and blue car number seven, that is Yulia Sova, the Russian, who is having, uh, by her standards, a somewhat disappointing year. As uh, Arto Kakinen is the first car to kick off pit stops, and it looks like most everyone else except Kurt Pliskin has entered the pit lane. And, um, oh, it looks like Lev Azarov came in a little early. Oh, Azarov hit the pit wall! Uh, Azarov looks like he cut off Adrian Devereaux and took himself into the pit wall. Looking at David Krikorian in the 66, he may have come in... Oh, no! There's smoke coming out of the back of that car! We uh, were looking over at him because we thought he entered the pits a little fast, and then he might have broken the pit speed limit, but that wasn't the case. Looking uh, off uh, Mike Whitmore's car, this is the Ocean Motorsports car, as that's Yamino Tenshi right in front of him, and in front of Tenshi is Chris Davenport. Oh, Tenshi's pit stall's there, and Whitmore right in the back of the 25 car. Uh, I can't play Whitmore's radio chatter. There are too many expletives. And we've got a problem here for the 67 of Daniel Melrose. The Australian, the mad uncle, has uh, apparently broken down in his Vernstrom. And uh, that looks like he's going to be in um, one, another early retirement in this race. And I think there was trouble right up there. There's Mike Whitmore's car. Looks like they just pulled the whole front clip off of that car. There's Lev Azarov in that white and lime green car. Azarov is into the wall. Azarov into the wall in the 82. And Whitmore, oh, Whitmore into the side of the 25. Same car hit in the pit lane. Now, I wonder if that was if that was retaliation. That was that was absolutely ridiculous. But that thing jumped out very very suddenly. Uh, let's have a look here. Oh, that thing the, the back end started coming around in the 38. Whitmore went to went to correct it, and well, he got right into the into the 25 car. Either that or he uh, tried to pull it to the left in order to uh, just try to spin it out real quick, but that didn't work. Uh, this is under this is under the yellow flag. There's Tom Delgado and Zach Duff. There's been some... Um, these two have had some issues all throughout the weekend as Akira Ishikawa runs into the back of Matt Taylor and Tony Durbin, and around goes the 74 of Zach Duff. Ishikawa into the back of, into the back of Durbin, and it looks like... Uh, well... Tom Delgado and Zach Duff's uh, little feud they were having and final practice is continuing on. We're not quite sure about the details of that, but they were, um, there were, uh, the, both their respective crews were not terribly happy with each other after uh, final practice. Something going on in the garage, we think. Kurt Pliskin, the 16 car leads in the Lycoya. Lycoya made their Master Cup debut here a couple of years ago, and, uh, well, since then, they've scored a couple of wins. Greg Woodard, the winner of the round of Wales, has surprisingly failed to qualify. Leonid Roderick in car number four is now leading the race. He's won this race three times before, but he's got Morgan Le Fay on the inside of him in the WYSIWYG Team World Soft car. The Team Canada regular it looks like she's going to go right on through and is going to bring Yulia Sova in the Cats event. Dale Roswell in one of the clockworks right on through. But it looks like Scott Bates in that 88 car might have other ideas as uh, LeFay sweeps by, and so does Nasova. Roswell tries to follow through as we're on board with Scott Bates in the custom cart century. Roderick is, looks like he's going to be going backwards in a hurry as uh, Scott Bates following Roswell. Roswell is the oldest driver in the field at uh, 66. Roderick uh, in the four car um, going even further back through the field. 
but Scott Bates is, I do believe, the second oldest driver in the in the in the field. And as I said earlier, he is the oldest series regular. Nasova has a run for the lead, and Bates looks like he's going to dispose Roswell. As we got looking further back, that's Gasper D'Souza in the double zero, and they're calling him into the pit lane. So. Uh, Black Diamond Racing throwing the dice. Uh, either that or they've got a legitimate problem with that car, and Arto Kakinen does too, because the nine car is blowing smoke out the back of it, and Arto Kakinen, one of the Gesslers, he is definitely done. He's trying to pull that thing. Oh, he could slide it sideways. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Great car control there by the Finn. He brings it through the grass well over 150, keeps it uh, from spinning out and, and causing a caution. So, Hats off to Arto Kekkonen as Palmer Styles in the 34 leaves the pit lane. Um, I do believe he hit some debris, but the team uh, decided to turn into a routine pit stop anyways. Uh, so Team Sorry USA throwing the dice with um, the 34 car. Uh, neither one of their cars running terribly well at the moment. Yulia Nasova in car number 7 leads the race after that little scare there with the uh, with Arto Kekkonen's car. Scott Bates and Adrian Devereaux pulling away from the rest of the pack. Kurt Pliskin trying to do likewise, but uh, I don't think Pliskin's got enough speed in that Lycoy to catch these two. Uh, Adrian Devereaux's car has been uh, dubbed the killer shark by uh, a, lot of a lot of his competitors. Here's Davina Henton in the uh, number 11 Lynx car. She's up to 20th place. The Curiala winner trying to make it two for two for double points races, this being the second double points race this season, the second of two. The other being the Curiala Grand Prix, which she won uh, quite w over her teammate Melanie Cleveno. Cleveno's not really made as much of an impact on the race yet, but uh, uh, Henton in that 11 car just slowly making her way forwards. As uh, we're now looking at Packer Carroll and Alexis Rainsford battle. This is a battle for the lead of, that, of the second group of cars. Uh, they haven't quite caught Kurt Pliskin yet. Rainsford in the 27 leading that group. There's Packer Carroll, who is interestingly enough driving uh, her old car, technically. Uh, it's got her old race engineer. And uh, many of the other things she used to have at Volpe went to Packer Carroll. Uh, interestingly enough, he hasn't had the same level of success. Here is the car 343 of Morgan Le Fay. Really the odd one out here. Both Yulina Sova and Matthias Taub, proven race winners in the series. But remember, Matthias Taub uh, really got his break in the series after a very strong one-off showing. Maybe Le Fay can do likewise. The 24 car, Brandon LaRoe, just pitted. You may have seen him in the pits. And quite honestly, he's one of the more underrated drivers in the series. He's uh, done very, very well in his Independence Trophy outings, and he's even gotten the pull at Decatur before. We're on board now with car number seven of Yulina Sova as Morgan Le Fay comes through in car 343. Oh, Morgan Le Fay. Uh, just a uh, little well, bit. That was a little close there. And anyways, here comes Matthias Taub in the 10 car trying to take two for one. No, Le Fay's giving him a hard time. Not exactly shutting the door on him, though. Morgan Le Fay is really clean up her act yet. That's a pleasant surprise. Ian Cooper pits from 13th on lap 38. So the Team EFR is throwing the dice with the 777 car. Now this is a right around the time when pit stops should be happening. Davina Henton in the uh, number 11 car is coming into the pits on lap 39. She was running in 17th. So Henton slowly making her way forwards. Melanie Klebno not having quite the same amount of success there. Taub into the pits. In lap 41, on lap 41, uh, that's about when I about when we're expecting pit stops, and it looks like everyone else is coming in on lap 42, so everyone's trying to stay out as long as possible. I see a couple cars missing here in the pit lane. There you see Cooper and Henton still on track, or they're coming back out on track. And here's everyone. Here's the back half of the field, or back part of the lead group. Quiggles Jr. there. Scott Bates on the 88 car. You may have seen missing in the pit lane because he came in on lap 43, stayed out all by himself, and he winds up in the lead of the race conveniently. And he's got, there you see Taub in second, as you see the uh, field run through on the left side. And here's Zelda Ashby having a very solid day. Uh, there's been some rumors circulating around about FPO, particularly in regards to the lack of sponsorship on the other two cars, which you can see in the picture. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., that white car, and that black and red car is Marcus Leonard. Uh... But Zelda Ashby has been working wonders with this car, with the uh, the Terminator car, and uh, Ashby has actually made a championship challenge, but uh, there's still quite a few races left to go. As Alexis Rainsford in car 27 is uh, hooking up there with older sister Rachel Rainsford. Both the Rainsford sisters now married, and interestingly enough, both still racing under their maiden names. Adrian Devereaux at car number one 
following Yuli Nasova. As you see, Devereaux and Bates have caught the lead two cars, but that Morgan Le Fay is no longer in the lead group. The WYSIWYG Team World Soft had a disaster of a pit stop. Kevin Dwyer and Lewis Kingston into the pits. Both these cars, um, uh, both these cars apparently hit some debris or something because, uh, well, I don't know why they're both, either one of them are in. Here's Bob Steffens in the 77 car. He's not in the lead lap, but if uh, he's able to hang with Morgan Le Fay, it might help Le Fay keep away from the uh, incoming horde of cars. But also, it could be that they're running into the lap car Mike Whitmore right there in uh, car number 38. And uh, you see Roderick getting by Whitmore. Uh, Mike Whitmore not exactly earned too many friends throughout his entire career, and today is no exception. Michael Sykes in the red five going by. There's Ian Cooper in the triple seven car. You can see his famous yellow helmet through there. Oh, Quiggles Jr. not giving him any room. Quiggles Jr. wants Whitmore out of the way as soon as possible. There's Chris Allen. And Packer Carroll going by. Whitmore holding his line for the most part. And there's Dale Roswell still looks like the same helmet and driver's suit that he's had for years. Anyways, Ashby is... Uh, is closing in on him. Car 30, uh, car 55. There's Tony Durbin on the outside. Oh, Ashby in, in trouble. Back into that car kicked out suddenly, and Ashby slowed that car down in a hurry. I wonder if there's any uh, suspension problems uh, with the FPO Terminator, because Ashby's bringing it in very slowly. Uh, now, I'm surprised if it's a suspension problem that Ashby didn't just smash the wall. I don't see any smoke coming out of the car, so I'm just speculating that it was a suspension problem with that car. Roderick now holding station behind Kurt Pliskin in, in the Lycoya. The snake coil is Lycoya. That's a mouthful. Anyways, uh, Roderick is now holding behind Pliskin, trying to make a run on Ian Cooper. And, oh, uh, there's Lev Azarov being kind of a nuisance in car 82. Azarov has, uh, uh, is, uh, they lost their sponsor that they had at Karyala. Uh, it turned out to be a, a very, very elaborate pyramid scheme. And, uh, well, that's, uh, Bit of a disappointment for Roos Autosport. Good that they may. Oh, Quiggles is, is out. Big, a uh, big detonation from Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Car number 99 is out of the race. He was running in 11th, so that's two of the three FPO cars out, and it appears to be two completely different problems because um, that's a lot of smoke billowing out of the back of that car. So uh, Quiggles Jr.'s day ends after it was actually a very, very strong start, and this might really hurt him in the Rookie of the Year battle. He crashed. Uh, excuse me, he crashed out of Karyala very, very early, and uh, um, a DNF here is not going to help his Rookie of the Year campaign. As Matthias Tau continues to lead over Scott Bates, Adrian Devereaux, and Yuli Nasova. Taub in the 10 car. The Swede is really, really looking to pad his championship lead. Adrian Devereaux doesn't want him to do that. Scott Bates is a legitimate championship threat. And really, Yuli Nasova is the only one of the top four that's not. It's really kind of a it's really kind of out of the championship hunt. Ian Cooper kicks off the uh, the pit cycle. Next pit cycle, lap 57. As uh, Yuli Nasova way down in the championship hunt, she's going to need a lot of big results, and everyone else is going to need. Oh, Tao pits from the outside lane. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, there was there was talk in the drivers' meeting about doing that. I wonder was Tao playing some mind games there with Adrian Devereaux because. I think he knew he may have had been able to make it in, but that was still a little bit uh, that was still a little bit cheeky there from Taub as Scott Bates stays out a little bit later as you saw uh, Adrian Devereaux and Yulina Sova hit the pit lane. On board the Schaefer Sapphire number 72 of Kevin Dwyer as uh, right sacked up his teammate right in front of him, Lewis Kingston in the blue and white car on the inside, blue, white, and red car. Oh, contact between Kingston and Duff. Duff in the wall. Dwyer nowhere to go but right in the back of him. Kevin Dwyer, a bit unlucky right there. That's gonna, that's some big damage there for the 72 car. Lewis Kingston almost had him cleared. But uh, Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car is throwing the dice. And he's staying out longer than anyone else, even longer than Scott Bates. So uh, Kurt Pliskin sort of inherits the lead very briefly. Uh, he's been pretty quick all race long, but he's not been a huge factor. Uh, Alexis Rainsford's got a pretty long pit stop. They haven't dropped the, uh, they haven't let the 27 car go yet. Long, long stop for Alexis Rainsford, and uh, so that's a, that appears to be another mechanical problem because they were looking at the rear of the car, and they sent her back out. So, a uh, long, long pit stop for Alexis Rainsford, and she's going to go off the lead lap almost definitely, possibly off the lead lap again because. Uh, 
That was a huge blunder. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what the cause was. Um, she's da she's out of contention for the race win as Scott Bates leaves the pit lane and he's still got the lead with Adrian Devereaux and the Killer Shark right behind him, car number one. And there you see Matthias Taub still sitting in third. Devereaux now trying to set up the 88 car to take over the lead himself. Devereaux may have made some adjustments throughout the race to make his car better. That's what he's been uh, been very, very good at in recent years. And uh, undoubtedly, that's what's uh, been uh, help, helping him through his championship camp his two uh, previous championships. As Devereaux and Bates got shuffled back by Taub and Nasova. And uh, Adrian Devereaux, car number one, trying to set up Nasova now and uh, try to keep that 88 behind him. And as I can see a couple cars they're catching, looks like Kevin Dwyer and Mike Whitmore. Well, I have to see if those two guys are going to play nice with the leaders. They are battling for position here. And uh, Kevin Dwyer on the inside of the 38 car. Um, wonder if uh, Whitmore is not exactly is not exactly going to be... Uh, well, it looks like Whitmore is going to be a bit easier to get by than Kevin Dwyer is. Dwyer is... Let's see if he sweeps up to the outside like he should. And it looks like he is... Can't exactly jerk your car too hard, uh, change lanes in the middle of the turn here. You will find Oh, Adrian Devereaux's in trouble! Adrian Devereaux, car number one, is in trouble! And there's smoke building out the back of that car! Devereaux will not defend his win here, and he is out of the race! Car number one, the Haas Manufacturing Colton Morel Altair is definitely out of it! Devereaux, huge disappointment for the Frenchman! And, uh, that is, that is definitely going to hurt him in the championship hunt! Gasper de Sous in the double zero car. Oh, that's a bit awkward. Uh, awkward place for the leaders to run into him. De Souza had just pitted um, in that in the double zero Tremwell, and uh, I don't. He caught the leaders by surprise because otherwise he would have been on. He would have been on the low side in the corner. He wanted to get to the high side, but that was just very very awkward. Matt Taylor up to 18th place. He won here in 2004. That same year, he won the championship. He's running this race in a year-old Sar Eagle, and really, he's done better than the new Sars, to be quite honest. And uh, he is, uh, him and Andreas Laporta are both earning themselves, uh, should be uh, patting themselves on the back uh, for the job well done they've done so far. But there's still quite a bit of the race to go. Matt Taylor, car 15. No, no primary sponsor on the Rick Milligan entry, but... Uh, Taylor's giving it the best shot that he's got. He's making a, he's setting up the 92 car. And the Spaniard, Laporta, looks like he's going to lose that spot. Right behind him. That's Melanie Klebno in the, one of the Lynx cars. Uh, Kurt Pliskin in the 16. Leonid Roderick and Morgan Lefay are still running in the top 10. But if they're going to make any impact on this race, they need a yellow and they're going to need it fairly soon. There's still a couple pit stops left to go. And, uh, not a, and time is going to be running out, and they're not going to be catching the leaders the way things are going right now. So Roderick, oh, Roderick looks like he wants to take over, uh, uh, the, uh, take the position from Kurt Pliskin. And uh, there right in front of them is Bob Steffens and Michael Sykes in the red five. So uh, Pliskin slides behind Roderick, and Tony Durbin now getting in the way. Now Tony Durbin's the kind of dry. Now Tony Durbin doesn't has never really been one of the best back markers. Whatever on the very few times he's been lapped, Tony Durbin. Oh, D'Souza, Gasper D'Souza came in there with so much momentum that if he were to lift off and let Scott Bates in, he might have lost the rear end of that car. So I can't fault him for that. That was just uh, again just sort of a awkward just circumstance there. As we got Davina Henton and Dale Roswell battling for a position here. As Ian Cooper in the Triple Seven car. Uh, looks like he's coming into the pit lane. Oh, Roswell pushes off the corner into Henton. Oh, keep it off. The Roswell saves it from going into the inside wall, but the caution's out anyways. I guess the fl the flagger thought that Roswell was going into the inside wall, and then that could have been uh, a very, very big smash. Uh, looks like all the leaders have pit under yellow, but uh, the timing of this pit stop is going to put a couple cars off the lead lap despite this. Everyone's going to have to pit again for fuel, possibly for tires, depending on how much tire wear is a factor. Uh, so, um, we could have a uh, tire. We got a fuel stop, so less than 10 laps to go. So, with that being said, it's a sprint to the finish. Scott Bates leads in the 88 Custom Carts Team EFR Journey 890. There on the inside is Lewis Kingston, the 17 car, trying to get himself back in the lead lap. If there's another yellow, Kingston's back in the race. 
Same with Gaspar D'Souza. But Matthias Taub in the 10 car is going to shuffle Bates out of the way. And Taub is going to try to is going to try to get around him. Here comes Yulian Asova in the 7. Kurt Pliskin in the 16. But there's uh, problems in the back as Packer Carroll in the number 2 Volpe has got smoke billing out of the back of that car. And he is out of the race in the Volpe. Melanie Clevno, car number 12, is running in 14th. She's running with Matt Taylor. Two, uh, two cars are really beginning to make, these two cars are really beginning to make an impact on the race. Matt Taylor, I really didn't think Rick Milligan's old, year old Sar had any shot at getting in the race, but Team Sar USA uh, used that car to great effect here last year. So I guess maybe it's not so much a surprise. I guess it's more of a surprise that he's running as well as he is. Kurt Bliskin in the 16 car. Uh, a bit of a sketchy moment there with Ian Cooper and Bob Steffens, but uh, now Pliskin could 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 Kurt Pliskin win this race a second time? He took his teammate Joel Rodriguez's spot to get e to get into the race in the first place, so that would be an interesting set of circumstances if Pliskin were to take victory here. Morgan Lefay back in the hunt in the 343 car. This car has suddenly come alive as uh, Lefay trying to hunt down Leonid Roderick here and uh, have her revenge for being shuffled out a little bit earlier. Uh, so, right behind LeFay is Brandon Leroux in the 24 car. He isn't a factor at all. Scott Bates got shuffled way back, to, way back to the field, but he is on his way back to the front in a hurry. Get, gets around Palmer Styles. Melanie Klebno trying to follow suit. Melanie Klebno, uh, she said she learned how to drive um, on ovals, mostly by following Scott Bates around the racetrack. Scott Bates and Adrian Devereaux said the same about Scott Bates as well. So Scott Bates uh, unintentionally a mentor for some of the rising stars in the series. But not only that, Scott Bates at age at how at age 49 still very much a star in his own right, as he is now is caught up to Luciano Savarol and Davina Henson in the other Lynx car. Henson is now in the fray for some major points. The Cariello winner lucked out big time getting into this race, and now as the race has gone on. Davina Henton has found herself to be very, very fortunate. As Yulina Silva now is going to take over the lead from Matthias Taub. As you see, Ian Cooper still is still up there at the leaders. He, if he remember, if he gets around the leaders and there's a yellow we're at the perfect time, he goes around the back and he's back in the race. Effectively, Leonid Roderick in the four car now, trying to get around Ian Cooper. Cooper not exactly giving up there. Kind of say the same about Bob Steffens, but uh, he's two laps down. So I really, uh, Bob Steffens really should back off a little bit, but because uh, I don't think he's got any shot at points because there's more than 20 cars in the lead lap. Well, anyways, uh, Leonid Roderick um, now makes a move around Matthias Taub to take over the lead of the race. However, he gets shuffled back a little bit from Yulian, by Yulian Asoba. Bates having another run, or uh, Leonid Roderick, sorry, having another run at the lead. In car number four, and now he's going to take over the lead there. Scott Bates is now running into the, into the lead pack. There's his teammate, Ian Cooper. Wonder if these two cars can hook up. And uh, we can see uh, maybe they can get themselves back to the front of the pack. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper now lined up nose to tail as Morgan LeFay. I saw LeFay dive into the pit lane, and Leonard Roderick with less than 10 to go. So Roderick into the pits, LeFay into the pits, Roswell in. These cars pitting a little earlier. Tire wear is... Uh, Clearly a factor, but I don't think too many people are going to end up taking tires. Matthias Taub in the 10 car following Julian Silva now, as the two EFR boys have hooked up with Bob Steffens in the way in the 77 car. But there you see, they now have caught Alexis Rainsford in the 27 car. There's definitely a serious mechanical problem with this with the 27, but Rainsford, very professional, stays high and lets everyone else go by on the inside. Tough break for Rainsford. She's now two laps down. And uh, I don't think she wants to stay out there with a car that with a car that off the pace. Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car pits, all by himself. And uh, let's see if Yulia Nasova's Nasova's appealing low coming in. I thought that was the case. She was on the track awfully low. Scott Bates now looking off the back of that car. Nobody behind him. He's only got Taub in front of him in car number 10. And they've both pit after 98 of 104 laps in this round of Indianapolis, but Scott Bates beats Taub off pit lane. Team EFR gets that car fueled in a hurry, and they're going to get him out of pit lane much quicker than Taub is able to, 
and these two cars just came screaming into the pit lane at a very high rate of speed and just hit the speed limiters at the very last minute. These cars do have pit speed limiters on them. Leonid Roderick and a pretty pretty bad pit stop, but there was a lot of pit lane traffic at, the, at that time. Not as much when Scott Bates and Matthias Taub hit the pit lane, but Bates has a solid lead right now with Taub in second and Morgan Le Fay in third. Morgan Le Fay came in virtually all by herself, but um, she's getting reeled in very quickly by all the cars behind her. Morgan Le Fay is sitting in third. Melanie Klevno and Yevgeny Kuznetsov are sitting in the top ten, despite not being factors for the rest of the race, but Klevno and Kuzi at the front when it matters the most. Melanie Klevno and Kuznetsov could pick up some huge results here. As Kuznetsov moves around Lewis Kingston, he's not a factor at all. But there you see Savaral and Roderick in front of him. Kuznetsov could walk away from this race a real hero because Nasova had a disastrous pit stop in the other Katsiv. And uh, he, should, he definitely is going to need to pat himself in the back for this one. But, uh, looks they're catching Morgan Le Fay very quickly. But, it, but at the front of the field, Matthias Taub in car number 10 ran out of time to run down Scott Bates. He's about to snap a near two-year winless streak. Scott Bates pulls a perfect 70 off in a double points race. Scott Bates takes the win over Matthias Taub, Morgan Le Fay. But despite all odds, held on to third. Luciano Savaral, Yevgeny Kuznetsov round out the top five. Great job by Kuznetsov in the Katsiv. Klevno, Roderick, Nasova, Matt Taylor, great run for the 04 Series champion. And Kurt Pliskin round out the top ten. Andreas Laporta, Yamino Tenchi scored points. Han Young Sung and Chris Allen both walked away with points. Akira Ishikawa in his debut walked away with points, as did Brandon LaRoe who rounded out the points, 20th place. It doesn't count for Independence Trophy points, but it's certainly something that he can smile about, uh, regardless of what happens to him the rest of this season. So, uh, also, Davina Henson, you may notice, walked away with some points. That's going to help her championship effort, which is really, which is really uh, sort of stuttered lately. had not had a whole lot of luck in that department. Speaking of which, let's have a look at the Master Cup Drivers Championship, and Matthias Taub has a pretty solid lead. He's no matter what happens in the round of Colorado, Taub will still be leading the championship entering Australia. Michael Sykes and Adrian Devereaux, second and third, are his closest challengers. Davina Henton is still in the hunt, but uh, then you got Zelda Ashby and Scott Bates with his uh, 140 points in one race has really helped his championship efforts, and that's really put Scott Bates in amongst uh, the championship contenders. Uh, Melanie Klevno and Leonard Roderick, uh, I shouldn't, uh, and uh, Arto Kakinen, they might still be contenders, but they're going to need quite a bit of help. And uh, beyond them, I'd say everyone else is a little too far back to really make a serious run at it, unless something very strange happens. Um, Kuznetsov, uh, really, that this result here could solidify his rookie of the year, can, um, uh, his rookie of the year battle, but uh, remember, uh, he did get whacked with that penalty, but that doesn't count for Rookie of the Year. The next time we see the TM Master Cup Series in action will be the uh, for a very interesting special event at Colorado, a new track over there. There will be a showdown with all of the Independence Trophy contenders in one race, and then the top three from that race will join the TM Master Cup Series regulars for the round of Colorado.